And now the International Potato Centre has embarked on promoting nutrition and innovative urban farming for healthier cities. Joining us now uh, is uh, Dr. Robert Akatia Arma, Deputy Global Leader and Regional Nutritionist for the International Potato Centre. Uh, glad to have you speaking to us. At least now we managed to get you on the show so I can grill you as much as possible. <laughs> now, Dr. Robert, um, the conversation on, first of all, having urban farming is one that uh, is noted from a national level that can't be scaled as much, m mainly because uh, primarily we have a lot of kitchen farming. In Rwanda, land is scarce and where it is, it's dense. Help us understand what we're working with today. Um, so with uh, rapid urbanization in many countries going on uh, currently, uh, we realize that population in, in urban areas are rapidly increasing. Right. And with increasing um, urban populations, are, uh, we have competing interests for land, right. um, also for other resources. Uh, so as much as we celebrate these, uh, there are many uh, trade-offs uh, with uh, economic development, right. particularly when you have a lot of rural urban migration. And right. so we know that by 2030 um, and 2050, urban populations will increase by 50 and 60 percent, um, respectively. Right. Um, to go with that, the Sustainable Development Goal number two, which talks about um, ending um, hunger right. and making sure that uh, there is sufficient and nutritious foods for all, uh, it will uh, meet their targets in 2030. Right. And so as part of that, we have our responsibility to make sure that urban populations, uh, particularly those that do not have resources mm -hmm. um, to buy uh, processed foods or other foods that come with development right. are also taken care of. Right. And so as part of that, uh, urban gardening is something that's really being encouraged. And so it's something that's not difficult. Uh, it's, it's easy to do. Uh, you can grow fruits and vegetables on your balcony mm -hmm. in, in a high rise uh, to make sure that you have supply of nutrient rich crops right. Um, right around the year. So as much as uh, the Rwandan government in particular is promoting kitchen gardens, uh, space becomes that issue. And right. so the International Potato Center as part of our efforts to ensure that nutrition um, is met for these particular people who cannot afford uh, introduce this concept of urban gardening and together with the city of Kigali we're running um, that this week to educate and encourage people to get involved. All right now there's some initiatives that were launched primarily to go within the uh, agriculture sector. Number one was post harvest losses we moved from that to now seed systems which the International Potato Center was a part of. How do we work out the two conversations from those initiatives now into nutrition? Okay. So post-harvest uh, is, is an important um, aspect of food management. And so because we don't have the infrastructure to help us develop our uh, post-harvest management systems, there's a lot of food that's lost uh, because of processing. Right. And so with food lost and food waste also goes nutritional loss and nutritional waste. Right. And so the seed systems um, that have been uh, promoted by policy are basically aimed at ensuring that there is availability of uh, planting material that is of good quality to right. ensure that there is productivity. And so with increased productivity, will be, uh, food will be available. Right. But uh, there are several issues, particularly when you talk about food insecurity. And so there are issues around affordability, access, and even use. Mm. And so uh, to encourage people to consume nutrient-rich nutri nut nut crops, um, these different components that you're talking about are interlinked uh, into making sure that uh, nutrition is the central point of uh, urban populations. Um, if you consider a lot of development programs, uh, particularly targeting nutrition and malnutrition, these are being implemented in the rural areas, and right. rightly so for, for good reason. Right. Uh, but as I said, with the shift in rural urban migration, we need to be also uh, responsible for some of these uh, people who are moving in to urban areas. Now, if you look at the distribution of malnutrition rates um, globally, you realize that in urban areas or in cities that are fast developing, particularly in Africa, right. malnutrition rates in cities are actually going up. Right. And so nutrition then becomes important as much as we talk about some of uh, the other things that you mentioned related to seed systems and post harvest management. All right, now if we mention uh, the International Potato Center introducing innovation uh, into the sector, we would imagine a cost element to it, uh, particularly if we're going to tie it to the national mandate. So who handles this cost element and who follows up 
on the processes, at least from the innovation perspective? So uh, as a research center, uh, the International Potato Center is funded by many donors, including right. uh, USAID and uh, DFID. And so as part of our research in innovation and technology, we do test out these technologies within our research facilities. Right. And once they are developed, we have the mandate to support national agricultural research systems to roll out some of these technologies. Okay. So for example, in this urban agriculture and urban gardening that we're promoting, we're talking about uh, vertical gardens, for example, using simple tools that could uh, be turned into waste. So uh, waste bottles, uh, boxes, uh, cardboards, plastics, um, sacks, uh, which can you can fill them with soil, okay. and they can actually produce quite a substantial amount of the fr uh, vegetables that you consume, and that can meet your nutrient requirements. Right. So these are not uh, rocket science technologies to say, but these are simple things that people can do um, that we usually would not do. Right. And so that's where we call that the innovation, bringing that new technology to people. All right. Have you uh, mapped up? Uh, have you mapped out with the uh, Environment Management Authority about carbon emissions? Because I would imagine that uh, that would be one of the largest issues that we're currently facing. Yes. Um, I, uh, particularly, uh, we work a lot uh, with the en Environmental uh, Commission, and uh, particularly uh, as a research institution, environmental issues related to carbon emissions are important to us. So the carbon footprint that we leave with the kinds of innovations that we do right. are really important to us. And so we do discuss that and we look at how best to reduce that with improving uh, the technologies um, that we introduce to people. A, a quick one, just give me one minute of your time um, uh, before we wrap up. Uh, so the number one approach that we would think ordinarily for the public would be us approaching every restaurant and telling them we need people to eat healthier. But that's not as feasible as we might make it seem. Yes, uh, that's not as feasible as you might make it seem, but there is the element of behavior change and communication right. to it. Gradually. And so the program that we're having currently is one way of reaching uh, the urban population. And so as people listen to radio spots, TV uh, spots, uh, and as well as, as we create awareness about the importance of um, consuming healthy diets, we hope that uh, people will change their attitudes towards that. Because currently, uh, with increasing uh, population, we also have the dichotomy of obesity and undernutrition right. coexisting at the same time. Okay. And so, as part of uh, our urban garden campaign, we also it goes with a nutrition behavior change campaign, creating awareness and teaching people um, how to combine and eat these foods. And so, restaurants and uh, many other places that serve food uh, fall into the range of our target groups for nutrition training. Right. And so we do build that capacity um, there. And particularly for sweet potato, which is an important crop for us, right. uh, it serves both as calorie and also very rich in vitamins and minerals. And so we do like to encourage people. And uh, it might surprise you to know that even though it's a root crop, it's also a vegetable. Right. And so that goes well with urban gardening.